Good afternoon. My name is Wallace Gator Bradley, and I'm the host of the Bradley Report. I'm also the president and the urban translator for United in Peace, Inc. We've got a very interesting show today. So much has happened. Still too much violence. Senseless violence, shootings, and killings got to stop, and everyone got to support the code. I'm going to talk about the hearing that I was a part of. Myself and Loretta Brady, who is the daughter of Lottie Smith, and Madam Chairperson, State Representative Lilly had a hearing dealing with reforming nursing homes. And she and about four other committeemen from, I'm not committeemen, chairpersons, they came to join her. We're going to talk about that. And the fact that we need to know what's really happening in Calumet Park and the bullying, continued bullying of, not Calumet Park, I'm sorry, Calumet City. The continued bullying of an Illinois state rep who was elected mayor of Calumet City. Of uh, his name is Thaddeus Jones, of an elected official. I believe this is her third term. She was elected as the city clerk of Calumet City. We're going to talk about that. And if the time will permit, I'll find another issue for us to talk about because the name of the game is to be aware of what's happening. And understand the power that we as a people have. The topics to this show was put together by none other than the chairman of United Peace, Inc. My wife, Madam Chair, Terry Marsh Bradley, and the technician to make sure that everything is being handled properly in the studio is Brother Omari. So Brother Omari, let's go to work. If you pick up that gun and you fire that gun, Anyone that get harmed from you firing that gun, that's an innocent bystander. We're asking the community, ostracize them, push them out, don't let them hide anywhere, don't support them, and let law enforcement do their job. The code is this. If you pick up that gun to solve your problem, I'm not endorsing violence. I'm saying, you're violating the code if you discharge that weapon and innocent people get shot or killed, especially a child or an elderly person. And the community must uphold that code. He got a shoe shine. The reason that it worked in the 90s 
because everyone was a part of it. Kids, women, elderly, was off limits. You didn't touch them. Didn't touch them. Yeah, ostracized from the community. Pushed me out of the community. Not supporting me in the community or protecting me in the community. So that law enforcement can do their job by apprehending. And the Cook County State Attorney can do her job by making sure that you get a fair prosecution. This is so that there is no retaliation in the community because you discharge or you fire that weapon that you're attending or attending the park. We all got to come together. Those of you, my name is Wallace Katie Bradley. I'm the urban translator. I'm the president of United PC. We all got to come together to let it be known that black lives matter everywhere. Regardless if a police shoot somebody that's black, it means twice as much to our community when someone black is shooting someone black. With at least eight children under the age of 10 shot in the city in just two weeks, some are asking if that code still carries any weight. This is something that we got to do. Gator catches up with some friends on Calumet. That one year old that got killed. In his conversations of late have focused on kids getting shot. He says the rule still applies. We as men got to put it down and say that still exists and never left. We all got a responsibility. We all got a responsibility, man. But it never left. I'm going to call out to all the brothers. You know what we do. Put the word on the street that this is no longer tolerated. Me and Holmes work together and we know how it works. We've been able to help individuals turn themselves in or the community, kick them out for law enforcement to come to rest. Now is the time. Just like it was a video from Miss Frazier to let everybody know about the awakening of George Floyd. Somebody got a video, a video, or we need to use our video to stop this senseless violence. And I believe that vengeance belongs to the Lord. And with that, I want to say, to God be the glory. And that's my story. Yes, sir. Sir, I just got something that just came up. And I'm going to go to this story right now. Very important. I was talking to you earlier about, you heard me make mention about the threatening and the bullying of an Illinois state representative slash uh, mayor of Calumet City and the bullying and the intimidation and now we find out that he has enlisted a state representative from Waukegan area and it's my understanding from this story that I'm seeing 
that he gave her a consulting contract. with the taxpayers' dollars from the city, from Calumet City, to the tune of $60,000. Understand this. You got a state representative, a no state representative, who was elected mayor of Calumet City in the last election. And there's a young lady, an honorable woman, an African-American woman, that was elected, I believe, for the third time as the clerk of Calumet City. As a matter of fact, her vote totals was higher than his. That is Jones. After putting out lies through Texas that the clerk fraudulently got a PPP loan, maybe two PPP loans, $20,000 a piece, in order, just the text that he sent out, or had his supporters sit out on his behalf, telling the residents within his representative district, as well as the residents in the city, in Calumet City, Illinois, that the clerk of Calumet City illegally fraudulently got some PPP loans in order to hire me Wallace Gator Bradley and I paraphrase what was in the text the gang leader to come to Calumet City It was a lie about the fraudulent loan. It's a lie that I'm a gang leader. All y'all know me. And he know me. And not only that, the state representative that he gave a $60,000 consulting contract with taxpayer, those are taxpayers' dollars from Calumet City in order for her to push the same lie to harass an African-American woman, an African-American elected official. And she went on social media and did this. And I'm shocked, as well as you are. Brother Mari, could you pull up the, uh, the story that... Uh, I just sent, I think I titled it, uh, okay, go up, let's say Illinois Mayor. Yes. Thank you. Questions are raised. You might hit that, hit that X right there. Thank you. I'm sorry. Questions are raised about state representative Rita Mayfield's role in Calumet City politics. Now, she's from Waukegan. She's a state representative. She also is a friend of Representative Thaddeus Jones, who is also the newly elected mayor of Calumet City. Can you put it up a little bit? Right there. Questions Hold on one minute here. I wanna get this right. Oh 
Okay. Questions are raised about State Representative Rita Mayfield's role in Calumet City politics. State Representative Rita Mayfield has been vocal on social media regarding an ongoing battle between State Representative and Calumet City Mayor Thaddeus Jones. The Calumet, hey, bring it down a little bit, uh, uh, Omari. No, no, come up. I'm sorry, come up. I just want to get right there. State Representative Rita Mayfield has been vocal on social media regarding an ongoing battle between State Representative and Calumet City Mayor Thaddeus Jones and Cook County City Clerk and Yoda Figs. Figs has recently accused Mayor Jones of bullying her and using intimidation tactics to control her duties as well as her office, her elected office. A press release received by the Southland Journal has stated the following. Why is Rita Mayfield, an Illinois State Representative from the 60th District, who represents Waukegan, North Chicago, Gurney, Beach Park, and Park City, being paid $5,000 a month as a consultant to Calumet City? So $5,000 a month. 12 months would be $60,000 as a consultant to Calumet City. This consulting fee, in addition to her base salary as state representative, which is $69,464. As a consultant to Calumet City, she is being paid $60,000 a year to restructure the development of inspectoral services, which does building and code enforcement. To date, there do not appear to be any reports, papers, or work product produced. Her resume and her bio do not show any experience or expertise in this area of building codes or inspection services. The more interesting thing is that even with two jobs, both paid by Illinois taxpayers, Mayfield has time to lash out at city clerk and Yoda Figs on social media with a series of lies and defamatory allegations. They need to realize that there is a law against an individual defaming someone's character. I know because I want to suit in the federal court, all white jury, because my character was defamed. Avis Carvino tried to say I was a car thief. I told him I was not a car thief. They come to find out that the car was involved an insurance scheme by some employees with Avis. They accidentally rented me the car when the car was supposed to have been stolen. And they were trying to use my record, pretty much. And I had let them know I was never a car thief. I was arrested for burglary. I was arrested for um, robbery. I went to the penitentiary for violating uh, probation for the burglary. And I had to take a plea deal for a robbery where there was no witness and no victim. And I said, nowhere did it say I was a car thief. And I won the defamation of character suit. So, back to the matter at hand. The more interesting thing is that even with two jobs, 
This raises the question, did Mayor State Representative Thaddeus Jones actually hire consultant State Representative Rita Mayfield to work for Calumet City? Or just to be a crony in this bullying campaign against clerk figs? The only thing we have proof of is the bullying job. We don't have proof of the consultants on the consultant side. On social media, Mayfield has repeatedly tried to amplify false allegations that Jones have made against clerk figs. What is truly remarkable is that Jones is using not only free social media, but he is also using a paid text service. Are the taxpayers also paying for the tech service? Mayfield and Jones has accused Figs of not doing her job and publicly lied about the amount she has paid. At the same time, Jones has repeatedly tried to block her from being able to do a job. I want you to see this social media trend. Omari, could you could you uh, move it out the story up a little a little more, a little bit more, right there, thanks. These are screenshots of the social media comments were obtained by the Southland Journal and can be seen here. Rita Mayfield, she is gonna lose. More than a few duties if this is not resolved. Read a very alarming news article that could cost her freedom, if true. Anyway, not taking sides, just watching from the sidelines. Enjoy the weekend. Ha, ha, ha. Rita Mayfield. Again, she has failed to do the job that she was elected to do and has wasted taxpayers' dollars. Duties had to be given to others to complete. Facts matter, and the fact is she has been negligent in her duties. Sister Rita, this is my statement in the story. When asked of his thoughts on the situation, Wallace Gator Bradley, Figg's representative, I'm like our urban translator to get everything cleared out, said, I find it to be absolutely disgusting that an elected official would take sides, especially Jones' side, in this fight. In a world that is changing to ensure women are in equitable work environment, how can Miss Mayfield, Representative Mayfield, vocally take the side of a bully? And as an elected official especially, it shows a complete lack of tact. Okay? I'm saying this. Everyone know that that is Jones. Is bullying, intimidating, has threatened her, interfering with her being able to do her duties. It's public knowledge. There's been a story in the Sun Times and the Tribune to the fact where Madam Clerk Figs had to. Okay, Mark. Madam Figs had to sit across in a park across the street from the office because the mayor had created a toxic environment. No fact. But what's most important, how can any woman side with any man, whether this is a Chicago police officer or a Illinois state representative slash Calumet City mayor, 
How could you side with any man that abuse a woman, especially an African American woman, any woman, but especially African American woman? Any man, especially by an African American man, that would bully an elected official publicly. This is what he done. So how can any woman support any man that's doing that? And then later on down the line. If you accept a man bullying, abusing, intimidating, and harassing, and threatening another woman, then I pray that it never happened to you, Representative Mayfield. But don't look for the women to come and support you when you're not supporting this man. And you know me well. And you know how I stand. And you remember when I was in your city and an individual was doing wrong and tried to receive a check in the name of United Peace Inc. I went before the mayor in that town in your representative district and told him, do not give that person the check. Because there was an inference of impropriety. So for you to stand with this man, that is Jones. Knowing full well that he sent tax out. Trying to say this woman did something wrong. To hire Wallace Gate to the gang leader to come into. Tell you, man, it's appalling to me. So if you get a consulting fee and it's proven so far what you put out in social media, pushing the same type of lie, it's like y'all got that Trumptonian effect, the big lie. And if you tell the big lie long enough, people will start believing the big lie. That's what Trump do. That's why I call it the Trump Tony in effect. Stop it. You might not want to accept that consulting contract. And if you did, you might want to give that check back. Because it's going to cause a firestorm. Get out the way. I'm just saying that as someone that know you as a woman of integrity. But when I read these emails, all these Facebook things or whatever the social media is that you use with your name right there. I don't know if you're Social media thing was hacked. I'll let you explain that. We're going to get to the next story. Uh, hold on one minute. Let's see. Do, 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 do. What's really going on? Right there. There was a hearing today. Remember this, this story right here. Lottie Smith. Uh, could you take it up a little bit, Omari? Boy, oh, right there, right there. Where a lawsuit was filed against a West Suburban nursing home, Sava, Westchester Nursing Home and uh, Rehabilitation Center. A lawsuit against a West Suburban nursing home where 10 people died last year, which was 2020 from coronavirus and 
other rare diseases. This woman died and another woman had died. Well, I was at a hearing yesterday. And at that hearing, it was put together by It was put together by Chairman uh, Lilly, and it was dealing with the hearing. Thanks, thanks, Harry. The hearing was. The name of the hearing was Nursing Home Reform. The intent of the hearing was to discuss issues and remedies in the nursing home industry. And I was allowed to testify as well as Lottie Smith's daughter, Ms. Loretta Kiss Lash Brady, And they had representatives from the Illinois Department of Public Health. Okay? And the next committee committee meeting is gonna be on September twenty second, twenty twenty one. The chairperson is Camille Lilly. The vice chairperson is Anna Moeller. The Republican spokesperson is Tom Demer. Demer, I'm sorry, D-E-M-M-E-R. And the scheduled date for the hearing is, like I said, September 22nd, 2021 at 10 a.m. And will be held at the Belandi building, Michael Belandi building, on the sixth floor. Okay? And that's 160 uh, North LaSalle Street. 160 North LaSalle Street. That's on the 22nd. All right? I was at the hearing along with. Loretta Kiss Last Brady. Or Brady's Last Kiss. With Loretta, the daughter of Lottie Smith. And what was so wonderful about that hearing is that it was a joint hearing. You had the Human Service Committee. And this was the hundred and twenty, the hundred and second General Assembly Appropriation Human Services Committee. So you had the Human Service Committee, the Health Care Availability and Accessibility Committee, the Mental Health Committee. Okay, you had four standing committees. Okay, they came together to help have a hearing dealing with nursing home reform based off the atrocities that's been happening to nursing home residents, seniors, and those that's not seniors, but our residents in the nursing homes and the rehabilitation centers and the long care centers. Had representatives from the Illinois Department of Public Health speaking, gave they sign, then they allow us to speak. The wonderful thing about it, Loretta was able to share what she could share because there's a suit and there's so much that she could say, but what she shared was enough for 
the people that was, because they did it with a Zoom where they had other representatives and family members speak, as well as someone from the other state agencies speak. And out of that, we was able to tell our side to the point that the committee chair person or the committee chair woman who happens to also be the chairwoman of the woman's caucus within the state legislative body. That's the Hispanic women, the white women, the Asian women, the black women. They have a powerful caucus of legislators. I think they have the biggest caucus of legislators than any state. Powerful position. Women in powerful positions. And I'm going to name them for you right quick. Along right here. Because there was another state representative that was there. I think she's a majority leader. And that was State Representative Flowers. I'm glad that she was there. The things that she said. She said, if the COVID don't kill the residents, the food would. Because the food is full of salt and sodium and everything else. It's powerful. It's a powerful hearing. Powerful hearing. Powerful hearing. Okay, the chairs of the committees who attended yesterday as follows. The Appropriation and the Human Service Chair, Chair Lilly, the Human Service Chair was uh, Mola, the Mental Health and Addiction was Chair, Chairperson was Conroy, the healthcare availability and access, the chairperson was Representative Greenwood. And they all came together to deal with the reform because even though the majority of the individuals that have died from the COVID within the nursing homes or the residents that were affected because of the COVID and because of the fact that the nursing homes were derelict in their duties. But at the end of the day, everyone realized that it was affecting all people of nationalities, ethnicities, Republican Party or Democratic Party, conservatives or liberals, black, white, brown, Asian, regardless of your religion, was being affected because of the dereliction of duties of the nursing home. And not only that, they came to uh, the conclusion, and I'd like to thank Chairman Lilly for saying that they was going to work to prepare legislation to make sure that this industry is reformed and that future residents within the nursing homes 
will be taken care of better by the nursing homes and their employees. And they want to name the bill after Lottie Smith. And doing that, I also let it be known that the reason that there isn't an investigative body by the 102 county state's attorneys and the attorney general was because the director of the Illinois Public Health, the Department of Public Health, refu refuses to enforce the state law that's on the books. And Representative Flowers made mention of what the Nursing Home Care Act is. And it ties the hands of the state's attorneys, especially the Cook County State's Attorney, Kim Fox, and the Attorney General's hands, where they can't go in there and do a thorough investigation. And if the state's attorneys see where there's fraud activity or criminal activity, they could probably investigate to the tune where they may see that it's a criminal violation. And the Attorney General, through the enforcement of investigative mechanism, can see what is unethically wrong as well as the violations as it affects the rules and regulations of the various laws in the state of Illinois. But they can't do it. And hopefully, I shared with the representatives and those that were on the Zoom that all they had to do was asked the governor because he is sincere about making things right at the various nursing homes, whether it's the veterans, nursing homes, or whatever it is. Once you know better, it's imperative that you do better. I asked them to ask the governor if he will support the director to enforce that law because that's her duty. He appointed her. And I believe he's going to let her know that he supports her making that decision in order to make sure that the nursing homes are on notice that through the enforcement of that they all got to work together in order to see that all the employees and the residents get vaccinated because of this new variant. The governor is making mandates where state employees will have to be vaccinated or wear their masks. So let's get it done. I want to thank that committee for having the hearings, and I'm going to keep you posted on that. Now, we'll go to this next story. Okay, the judges. The Illinois courts named 22 new associate judges. What do you mean? What do I mean by that, Gator? This was an election that only the judges who were circuit court judges, had the exclusive right to pick or elect associate judges. They went through a strong list, I think of about 45 that they had to pick from. Oh, Mark, could, could you put it up a little bit? I'm talking to show him the name a little bit more. 
right there, right there. Out of 45, which was the short list, 22 made the list. Uh, Chief Judge Tim Evans is responsible for picking the individuals that's on this committee that take it from a short list to come out with a list, the short list, for the judges to elect and we got um, Associate Judge Marianne Ahmed, I believe that's her name. Let me get this right. I don't want to butcher the names. Okay. Du -du 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 -du. Is Marianne Ahmed, Lord James Brooks, Barbara Lynette Dawkins, James Thomas Derrico Jr., uh, Sabra Lynn, I hope I pronounced that name correctly, Ebersole. Uh, Carrie Laura Evans Jr., William Nicholas Fry, I think that's Fry, um, Barbara Forres, Mitchell Benjamin Goldberg, Jasmine Hernandez, Matthew William John S., Martha Victoria. Jamaris, uh, Dana, Anna Lopez, Carrie Elizabeth Mahoney Lathan, good friend, Thomas A. Morsey, good friend, James Byron Novi, Eric Mitchell Sacita, Teresa Marie Smith Conyers. Okay. Um, Akua Sylvestra, I think that's how you pronounce the name. If I mispronounced it, I'm sorry. But congratulations, just the same. Pamela uh, Strategist, Anthony Charles Swanigan, good guy, and Andrea and Torah, Torah no. That's a very diverse group of judges that have became associate judges. I want to applaud, as I wrap this up, I want to applaud the circuit court judges, the committee that was put together to make sure that it was a diverse group of Candidates, Indians, Asians, Hispanics, African Americans, white. Only way to have a diverse judiciary, you got to elect diverse judges. With that, I want to say thank you for listening to my to my show, and I'm gonna say to God be the glory. Get vaccinated. Stay covered up and stay prayed up. To God be the glory. That's my story. Peace.